Haribo Offering his pranams to his Guru Vargas and to all the devotees eager to hear Hari Kata, his pranams as per their qualifications. So, in a short time, we're hearing in a very simple manner all of the essential aspects of Bhagavatam, the essential Kata of Bhagavatam. So, it's a very good thing. Vedanchamsta Saramscha. So, so um, a good speaker, an eloquent speaker, is one who speaks an essential matter in concisely. So, what is the purport of Bhagavat? Why do we study the Bhagavat? Why do we hear the Bhagavat? Vyasa Devji. He divided the Vedas into four. He composed the Vedanta. He composed the Vedanta Sutra. Then he composed um, several Upanishads. Then going forward, he also composed the Puranas. Then also, Nevertheless, he did, he was not feeling pleased in his heart. In the end, by the mercy of Narad Rishi, Vyasadev, the final Puran, this 
Srimad Bhagavatam was manifested. Sarvedanta Sarami Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate. The essence of all the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads. This is the Srimad Bhagavatam. Parat Artha Vinayanaya. Even the Gurud Puran speaks the glories of the Srimad Bhagavat Puran. So he's mentioning one sloka. It's called the the uh, explanation on the Brahma Gayatri. So it's such an invaluable grantha. So all of the Vedas, the Puranishads, all of the scriptures, just condensing that and manifesting the essence. So Sarvedanta Saram Hirshimad Bhagavatam Ishati. The Gita of Srimad Bhagavat, one who has a little bit of taste in that, he won't have any taste in any other type of Gita. Because if someone attains the most excellent thing, then how can he maintain taste for just insignificant things? If you get some rabri, some kheer, some rasmalai, this is like the most tasty, sweet. If you get that topmost sweet, then who will just eat regular jaggery? So if one attains this most excellent thing, then automatically they leave the insignificant things, the lesser things. So therefore it is said, Sarvedanta Sarami Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate. The essence of all the Vedas, the Purans, the Upanishads, this is the Srimad Bhagavat Puran. The Srimad Bhagavat is giving an instruction, uh, it's giving a message. That how can we attain this fifth goal of the human life, Krishna Prem? All these other scriptures have told about the four goals of human life, Dharma, Artha, Kam, Moksha. Been told the glories of the demigods and demigoddesses. Told how to attain um, all of these temporary things of this material world. But in the Srimad Bhagavat, it is giving It is, it is telling even to renounce this time, our, even this mukti, religion. Uh. So in this fifth goal of human life, this Krishna Prem, which is the topmost goal of human life, Srimad Bhagavat is telling about this. Although it's saying that, you can also find a description of Radha's glories, of the glories of Raj in other Puranas. But these Puranas have, in truth, not given a completely proper explanation. In Srimad Bhagavat, there's such a beautifully described sequential um, description given. And the type of message that's given in Bhagavat is not found in any other Shastra. Therefore it said Nigam Kalpa Tarod Galitam Falam. So this wish fulfilling desire tree of all the Vedas, this Srimad Bhagavat is the completely uh, ripened fruit of that tree. And this fruit, it has no skin. Uh, it has no seed and it has no skin. Only ras, only this liquid essence, essence. Only a storehouse of this liquid essence. 
and it's been completely ripened. And then it's been tasted by the beak of this parrot. And then this, this fruit has manifested into this material world. And how has it come? Through this Guru Parampara. So if a fruit is ripened, and on ripening it falls to the, to the ground, to the dirt, then it, it, exper it bursts, it explodes. So this beautiful, be uh, tasty fruit, how does it come? It comes through our Guru Parampara. And who is tasting this fruit? Not everyone can manage to taste this fruit. Not everyone is eligible. So, not everyone has taste in this kata. This most excellent thing is not appreciated by everyone. So, for example, everyone goes to the storekeeper to get rice, dal, etc., eat uh, foodstuffs. How many people go to the goldsmith and buy gold? Gold. And then peop how many people go there and buy diamonds, etc.? How many people go? So every day people are buying rice, dal, vegetables, all of these things. So, but how often does one go to uh, the jewelry shop? <laughs> so, uh, people that So people buy gold and sell gold and silver. That's a little bit common. But who goes to the shop of the person who sells diamonds? Even less people. Uh, so people who are in very high society go there. Raj Sahib. High society. Muslims like rulers. Oh. Very rich. Yeah. Uh, this Bhagavad, this rust, this liquid essence that's there in the Bhagavad, who is tasting that? That's where it said, Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. Rasik and Bhavuk, those who are Rasik, those who are tasting this rust and Bhavuk. Most people just go for these these three goals of human life dharma, art, kaam dharma, people follow their duties in this material world they, man they maintain their families and they follow the, the, their, their uh, religious duties their worldly duties and then they uh, collect money funds and why do they do that? So that they can attain happiness and that uh, suffering will not come. So, Shukri Goswami is saying, Parikshit Maharaj, so why do people earn money in this world? For two reasons. In order to attain happiness and destroy suffering, unhappiness. But, We find that suffering comes nonetheless. Um, so out of seven days, how many days do you work? You work five days. Two days remain with you. And then on those two days, you have to do different things, go to the market, this and that. You have to do so many things. Where is the rest? Therefore, it said that 
you're creating trouble. More trouble. It, it, it takes trouble to earn money. And then there's even more trouble that's attained in protecting that money. Mm, so that amount of trouble that's there in earning the money, twice amount of that trouble is there in protecting that money. So, so people, you know, are out there who will thief and who will take your whole credit card and spend all your money. There are so many thieves around. Therefore, Shri, the Shukadeva Goswami Pad is saying that. So, however much trouble is there in uh, earning money, even more trouble is there in protecting that money. So, and then we become anxious. So, this uh, we, we become very anxious. Our consciousness becomes plagued by these worries. So it's like, better just someone takes all the money at once and it's just completely done. But the worry, the worry is like that, that so long as our life is going, our, our breath is, our life is are still present, we are still there in worry and anxiety. How many different types of anxiety and worry is there? That person who has wealth, he falls into anxiety. And that person who does not have wealth, he also falls into anxiety, worry. So, tell. If we're dharma, art, kama, there's so many several types of desires pertaining to these three things present in the heart. Ashesha kamana hridi maje mor, kodi damba parayan. This, uh, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how many aspirations and desires and longings are there in the heart? For la puja pratishta, for gain, worship, and prestige. I'm not telling for other people, I'm saying for my own mind. That mind, where are you running? Why are you running for this pratishtasha? Now he's mentioning from Manashiksha, one slope. Pratishtasha, dishta. Raghunath Das Goswami has said, This Pratishta is like an outcast dog-eating woman. So this aspiration for prestige, this Pratishta Asha. So if that remains in the heart, then how will Shuddha Bhakti uh, come there in the heart? So then, if that outcast woman is dancing there, then how will this pure frame of the sadhus sit there? So bhajan moves on such a place So, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Nartanit Vritti, Nisharuchi. All the way up to Prem, this sequence has been told. This sequence. How difficult is it to just make this faith arise in one birth? Shraddhastu Nanya Pai Vajanam Bhakti Mukti Tita Vritti Vishesha. The definition of Shraddha, faith, is being given giving up all other types of desires. Karma, gyan, tapasya, austerity, and all this, labh puja pratishta, um, leaving all of these anarthas, all these unwanted things, and one's uh, consciousness becomes inclined one-pointedly towards bhakti. So by Gurudev's association, by hearing Gurudev's Harikata and studying the scriptures, 
Therefore, very beautifully, uh, our Vishnu spoke very nice words. This truly beneficial thing, this bhakti, how can we attain that? So there's so many different types of water. There's completely pure water. There's mixed water. So when you drink some water, what type of water will you drink? The Vishuddha, this completely pure water. The purport is that people are doing bhakti. And we respect to all. One sloka. He, he said, I just remembered this sloka. You should respect all the devas and the devis. Because all of the demigods and demigoddesses are doing their service, their work, as per the order of Bhagavan. So he's mentioning the names of the different demigods. Uh, however many demigods there are, they're all working as per the order of Bhagavan. This man's asking a question about Ramachandra and Shiva. He's saying, Maya saying, I'll tell you later about Shiva talked about Ramachandra. He's saying, I'll, I'll tell you later. So however many demigods and demigoddesses there are, One is Vishnu Tattva and one is this Devata Tattva. One is Vishnu Tattva. Ramachandra is also Vishnu Tattva. So he's saying, uh, I'll tell this later. So the, dem the demigods, they are working as per the order of Bhagavan. So prayers are like that towards Rudra and others. So he's saying you should respect all of the demigods and demigoddesses properly. You should not perform avagya towards them. You should not You should respect all, knowing them to be the resting place of the Lord. And one who completely offers himself to the lotus feet of Bhagavan, you should keep that person's feet on your head. So if we offer one fruit, uh, one flower towards Bhagavan, It becomes Bhagavan's prasad. We should keep that on our head. That for all the demigods and demigoddesses, they are working as per the order of Bhagavan. They are representing representatives of His. All of the demigods and demigoddesses, by the desire of Bhagavan, by the order of Bhagavan, they are going forward and following that. Some are saying, that Durga, Kali, etc., these are like Bhagavan. But they criticize others. But our scriptures say, saying, don't criticize any demigod, demigods. Okay, he was saying some people criticize like Kali and Durga. I, I didn't understand that clearly. So Bhagavan, Krishna, Ram, these Vishnu Tattvas, Bhagavan. These are our worshipable, worshipable deities. Our faith is to be towards Bhagavan. Shadas tu ananya upaya varjanam bhakti mukti mukhi chitta vritti vishesha. We need to have this bhakti mukti Vritti. We need to have this tendency, inclination towards Bhagavan. That by Bhagavan's being pleased, everyone is pleased. If he is pleased, the entire universe is pleased.
and everything is of Him. So everything belongs to Him. Prabhu is giving everything. So who is speaking the Srimad Bhagavat? They are telling about this Vishuddha Bhakti. Shuddha Bhakti. This completely pure Bhakti. One is called Karma Mishra Bhakti, one is called Jnana Mishra Bhakti, and one is called Shuddha Bhakti. So, Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami has given such a beautiful definition of Shuddha Bhakti. Vilashita Shunyam Anuku, we need to have this favorable inclination towards the uh, the thing which is for Krishna's benefit. So all these things like jnana, karma, tapasya, they should not be covering our devotion. Anyabilash, it has junyam. We should be devoid of these desires which are other than for Krishna's benefit. So we should desire that we can always have this seva vritti. In the manner that if you pour some honey, some pure honey, then it is completely connected stream. It does not break. So in this manner, that in bhakti, uh, the service that we perform should be in that manner. It should be in that manner, our bhakti. And it should be completely and only centered on Krishna. So if we also have some bhakti towards some demigod, then that is not called shuddha bhakti. If we are trying to acquire this shuddha bhakti, it should be towards Krishna, towards Govinda. So Rupa Goswami Pad has given such a beautiful definition. If so many things have been told, so many things have been told about bhakti, having attachment to Bhagavan is called bhakti, it's said in one sutra. However, concerning Shuddha Bhakti, our, our Guru Vargas are telling us. Sri Bhagavat, what message is it giving us? What news is it giving us? What is it telling us about? Sanpatpara uh, that t- This type of mood can arise in our hearts towards this Krishna who is completely transcendental. This this mood that by attaining one's jitta, one's consciousness becomes completely pleased. So if we get this if we attain this bhakti, if we acquire this bhakti, then our hearts our heart becomes pleased. Our chitta. If that person's chitta, his heart is not pleased, then it's it's confirmed that bhakti has not yet arisen. The the chitta, the heart, it becomes completely pure. So it becomes disturbed by all of these aspirations in this material world remaining there. So we fall into worry, into anxiety. So to become completely delivered from all of these fruitive desires and 
in a completely one-pointed manner, being pointed towards Hari, not towards the samsara, then the citta will become very pleased. One sloka. Hetuki aprathihata yatma samprasiddhati So that the soul, the heart, it becomes very pure. The heart becomes nirmal, spotless. So, by that thing which the heart is not pleased, you should understand that sh that's not Shruta Bhakti. Shruta Bhakti has not come. But, look, this our face. What is that? It is uh, like, a, like a mirror. Our face is like a mirror. What is our heart? Like when our heart becomes afflicted, in that time, what's in our heart, what's not in our heart, it is shown uh, on, our f on our mirror. It is shown, displayed on the face. Savai pum sam paro dharma itta bhakti rehukchachi. Ahituki aprati hata. So it's another, uh, another um, some, these, two, these two adjectives have been given to describe bhakti. Ahituki aprati hata. Hetu, what is the cause? Ahituki. It's having no cause. So I've come to the mandir. I've given a few cents in the donation box, and I've paid my respects to Bhagavan. But I have some reason behind that. So we're not to demand anything from Bhagavan. If we demand something from him, we should demand his service, that I may attain your service. So, all of these things that we see in this material world, they all have cause. And when the cause is destroyed, then that result is also destroyed. So, if we sit and contemplate on this a little bit, but bhakti is referred to as ahituki, causeless. It's without any cause. And apratihata, it's continuous. It's uh, undisturbed, unafflicted without obstruction. Continuously we will do service. What is bhakti? What type of thing is bhakti? Seva is bhakti. The definition of bhakti in an ordinary manner, we can, under we can understand that service is bhakti. Nothing else. In an ordinary manner we see bhakti towards the mother, towards the father, towards the country. What is bhakti? It's service to the mother, it's service to the father, it's service to the country. So this type of bhakti we connect with. But this bhakti that is towards adokshaja, bhagavan, ahoksha, so So this shloka is saying that by the senses we should serve that person who is the master of the senses, who is transcendental to the material senses. All these designations we should renounce. Then we will become uh, freed from these designations, these lusts, these anger also. So how is the service to Shihari done? It's done by aprakrit senses, transcendental senses. This is called bhakti. This is called service. Seva vritti, being awakened. The tendency for service being awakened. Ah, so one more shloka he's mentioning here. Upanishad is saying that wake up, arise. Wake up, become conscious. Like, wake up and become conscious. So, Mahaprabhu is saying, 
जीव जागो जीव जागो गौर छंद बोले कथ नीर जाओ माया की सच्ची रखो ले शी माया नशी पारा लागी हरि नाम महामंच रो तुम मागी so wake up jiva wake up sleeping soul how long will you sleep in the lap of maya pisachini maya this witch this witch maya the comparison is always given of maya of like a witch like when one is ha- haunted by a ghost then he's not speaking that ghost is speaking to him he is saying something but actually the 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 ghost is giving his own introduction and in order to chase a ghost away what do you need you need to think so okay you need mustard seeds you need some mantra and then you throw those on top of that person and the boot he will run away from there the the ghost and the the vaishnav's remedy to get rid of a ghost is give him bhagavad ma prasad and then he will run so last time i was doing a fire sacrifice at a house and then uh the householder's sister had some ghost she was afflicted by some ghost and she started mm, so we tended the nishinga mantra we put some we gave some prasad and that ghost left so in this material world being bound by maya this which this ghost has caught us and we have forgotten our constitutional position so this this um this anartha is that our sarup we don't know it we don't know actually who we are we don't know who we in truth are This is called Swarup Brahm. I have this conception of I am this towards this temporary inert body. And if I do something, if I earn a little wa- money, then I start to think so highly of myself. I start to think, oh, I'm a great scholar. Like, like if you take a, a fish just above the water, then it starts to just like, shake and you know um shake very intensely therefore in the scriptures it's said this is our and ours this is an unwanted useless thing it has caught us but under the guidance of sadhu guru vaishnavas they will gradually make this thing uh, attainable to us this thing that who am i our swarup Jivra Swarupa Hoi Krishna Nitya Das I said that wrong So this is our introduction of our Swarup I am Krishna Das Jivra Swarupa Hoi Krishna Nitya Das So we are Das Therefore the living entities in this material world they are afflicted by the threefold miseries if for it said that in the association of the saints the great souls reside there the shrimad bhagavan is giving this message i am not this body i am krishna's servant gopi bratu parakamalay or das das anu das we have to make this attainable we this is to be realized so in truth i'm krishna's servant 
And then gradually, gradually, moving forward, how can we attain this Prem? Therefore, Shadas to Anyu Payavajanam Bhakti Mukti Chitabhishesha. So it said this about faith. After this faith, Sadhu Sangha. And Sadhu again is are several types. But how Sadhu Sangha is done? In this material world everybody says I am a sadhu. And who is a sadhu? Will a thief say that? I am a thief. So in this manner, the symptoms of a sadhu, saduti, saduti, it is sadhu, that person who does sadhan and performing sadhan and begins to um, begins to acquire his eternal uh, self. Then he becomes completely spotless, pure. So there's so many different definitions of sadhu. Therefore, Shri Rupa Goswami Pad is saying, Sadhu Sangha Sajatagi Ashaye Snikta. He should be Sajatiya of the same like family. He should be superior to us. He should be affectionate towards us. Saman Bhavana Vishisht. He should be of the same mood of us, like a worshipper of Radha and Krishna. And then we should do the, we should associate with them. Like Rupa Sanatan. Rupa Goswami resided at Ter Kadamba and Sanatan Goswami Bad at Pavan Sarovar. He resided there. Pa Pavan Sarovar. But Rupa Goswami went there and met with him. And he went there and he spoke. Harikata. Who's in order to hear who who's Harikata, in order to hear Radharani, she came in the dress of an ordinary cower girl and just sat there. So Radhaji said, Oh Baba, take this rice, take this milk. The sugar makes makes him cure because they were so immersed in speaking Harikata amongst themselves that they were oblivious to everything else. So Radhaji said, okay, then I myself will make it. And she sat there and uh, started making this cure. And she was hearing this Harikata. And what type of Harikata were they speaking? Not ordinary Kata. Only Gurudev said that on the first shloka of Srimad Bhagavatam, Janmarasyata, they were speaking on this sh shlok, Janma Adi. Rupa Goswami is giving a very beautiful art, a, a very beautiful meaning, explanation. And then Sanatan Goswami is giving even more. And they're giving this purport pertaining to Shingaras, Madhuri Ras. So, m making Kheer. This is just like an excuse for Radharani to come and hear this kata of Rupa and Sanatan. So, in order to hear this kata, Radharani herself becomes manifest. This is uh, true. Truth. Whose heart becomes so completely pure and spotless. Nirmatsaranam satam. So hearing from the lotus mouths of those who are completely free from envy, not from those whose heart is plagued by this lust, greed, anger, these six enemies, those persons who are completely, who have already become completely liberated from all of these worldly desires. And they don't they don't maintain any longing for anything of this world. So this type of saint, this type of great soul, 
Nimat Saranam Satam. Vidyam Vastam Atra Vastra Shiva Dham. What beautiful glories Bhagavat is telling. So just manifest this desire to hear this kata. Just the desire to hear this kata. Shushusha, this desire to hear the kata. And from this very time, Bhagavan, he sits in the heart. He sits there. How beautiful it is being told. So Bhagavat is not an ordinary thing. Therefore it is said, Sajatiya Asha Snigda. So those who are superior to us. Sajatiya. Who are of, in all respects superior to us. So who can deliver us from all these obstacles that come in the path of bhajan? As when Vishnupur was speaking, my heart was just like um, feeling so much bliss, like flutter, fluttering. In a very short time, he told such beautiful kata. He was expressing such beautiful things. Y'all liked it too, no? Yeah. Another shloka. The shloka is saying the same thing. Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. So, how many moods are being expressed? How much taste may be there in this Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavan, Bhagavan says, Who hears this kata? Through his ear, I enter into his heart. And then, whatever dirt is there in his heart, I remove all of that. And I myself sit there. In the same manner that a friend comes to your home. And what does the friend do? The friend doesn't say that, hey, give a chair for me. He himself takes a chair, wipes it clean, and sits. One friend doesn't give that order to another. What is the friend doesn't say in order to another. What does he do? They have a very friendly mood. He just him, he himself takes a chair and comes and sits. Yesterday I saw Vishnu Prabhu. So something like he was, uh, it's not clear for me actually. Someone sat on his chair. Okay, so someone sat in Vishnupur's chair, so he went and he took another chair and he sat. So it's like a small thing, but this is Vaishnavata. So this is called Vedic culture. So I don't want that anyone is troubled by my saying this, but we must speak these things. So I give this example of a senior Vaishnava. I was taking Prashad and I was just watching. And what did Prabhu do? He wandered around, he took another chair and he came and he sat. So 
भगवान ने सुधार जन्म में ऐसे वैष्णव जी ने बुधा उससे बुधा कौन है भगवान ने की थी So the commentator is saying in this shlok, hmm. so it's in the same line of thought. He's saying Bhagavan said he is the friend of the saint, the great souls. Bhagavan doesn't say that, oh, you kindly leave a seat for me. And if there's some dirt on the asana, he doesn't say that, uh, you should clean this for me. Bhagavan himself comes, he just like wipes the dust from there and he himself sits. So Bhagavan is such a magnanimous personality. He is the most magnanimous. So, Bhagavan himself, what does he do? He comes and he sits in the heart of the devotees. And any dirt, any like trivialty which is there, he just cleans that and he himself sits there. Hmm. How wonderful, how magnanimous is Bhagavan. So that's why we must see that in Bhagavad. What is satsanga called? Uh, what is what is this satsanga? What is sadhu sangha? Sajatya ashe snigda. Tasting the essence of this Bhagavad. This type, the association of this type of elevated saint who is tasting the ras of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, the topmost exalted devotee of the Lord is who? It is that one who has attained a body as the associate of Bhagavan. Bhagavat Parshan Dehat Prapt Narad, the associate of Bhagavan. Bhagavad Parishad Deha Prapt Narad Rishi If you have the association of Narad then all of your lust, all these things will leave you don't have to go anywhere if someone just has Darshan of Mahaprabhu then that's all so those who are even having Darshan of Mahaprabhu from some distance, some great distance Krishna Prem arose in their heart. So, so when they were traveling on the path to the jungle, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say, Krishna, Krishna, even the tigers, the lions, they would dance. He was going on this path. And he was chanting very beautifully, this Harinam. And he had two servants there. Maharaj just told their names. Jarikanda. The forest. So the bears, tigers, elephants. And Mahaprabhu was submerged in this transcendental emotions. And the tiger would lift up his front paws and open his mouth. And Mahaprabhu would say, Krishna, say Krishna. Mahaprabhu said, Say Krishna. And then simultaneously, this lion, he just became stood on his back two feet with his two front arms upraised and said, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. He started dancing, chanting the name of Krishna. 
So he transmitted this prem into the hearts of all. So those who took birth at that time of Mahaprabhu, who had his darshan, that is... So by having that darshan, such Krishna prem, we're thinking that I may meet a, a Bhagavat. So even if someone's a Mahabhagavat, we don't have the Sukriti. We can't understand them. So look what Bhagavan did. Did Duryodhan see to Krishna or did he not? He saw Krishna. Did Prema rise in his heart? No. Ravan, Kumbhakarna. The demons, they also saw Bhagavan. Comes, he also saw Bhagavan. Did a Prema rise in his heart? No. Why? Because he didn't have this type of Sukriti. So even a Mahapurush may be near to you. May be close to you. So y'all are fortunate that you've had the darshan of Guru, Guru Dev, and the service to Guru Dev. So you're very fortunate, because our Guru Dev, he is not anyone ordinary. He is uh, himself, Ramana Manjari, in Seva Kunj with Radhaji. This uh, Pujari, Radharani herself, gave the order to this um, Pujari of Seva Kunj. She said, my dear Saki is over there. Go and give him this prasad. This is not like imagination. We witness this ourselves. So this Pujari had come. And he uh, explained how Radhaji herself gave this instruction to deliver this prasad. Gurudev was there present in the courtyard of Gopinath Bhavan during Kati Prakrama. No, he was in Gopinath Bhavan on the bank, on the bank of the Yamuna. So he's saying how the Bujari at Seva Kunj, just nearby, he took this prasad and he came. And at that time, Gurudev had his rule that after eating he would take rest. And he wouldn't meet with people at that time. They were, the Sevaks were very strict. So the Pujari had come and he said that he wanted to meet with Srila Gurudev. So he said that I've come with Prashad. And he said, okay, yeah, we will give it. And he said, no, I, w I want to give it by my own hand. So he wasn't able to come at that time. He came again at exactly at four when Gurudev had arisen. Gurudev's door opened and he had come. So he had come, he had introduced himself, and then he had said how Radhaji herself gave this instruction for me to take this prasad and deliver it to you. So Gurudev, he was very grave. We saw the divine form of Gurudev. Tears began to flow from the eyes of Gurudev. So we didn't. So I saw in whatever this 
Pujari told, uh, it touched his heart, and he became com like completely stunned, like frozen. And then Gurudev, he distributed this prasad to everyone. And actually this prasad was so tasty, so, so wonderful. And I'm saying this because you people are so greatly fortunate that this associate of Radhaji, Radhaji's dear Saki, Ramana Manjari, we can't uh, begin to understand, begin to fathom this. Herself, Radha Manjari, Ramana Manjari, who manifested her heart as this um, Radha Raman Bihari. So if a disciple doesn't have, let's wait for it. So, shish, so that disciple who does not serve the Guru, who does not understand, experience the mood of the Guru, he is actually one who is just stealing the energy of the Guru. So, if you don't go for this, trying to understand, experience the moods of the Guru, then how can you be called a disciple? But see that this was like a very high class person. He was a Brahmana Brajabasi. So these these people, these Brahman Vajrabhasis, they're quite strong and rigid. From they're quite hard um, externally, but internally, like a coconut, they're very soft. So therefore, I'm telling the glories of Shri Guru Dev, because such a great, great, we've we've taken the shelter of such a great Guru. We've taken mantra, diksha, from such a great guru. We've touched the lotus feet of such a great guru. He's given us his darshan. So all we have to see too is that we don't make any aparad, any offense. Just that we should not make any offense. That much we must be attentive to. And then whatever else you do, Gurudev will uplift you. He will deliver you. This is the work of great souls. Sorry. Even my disciple may go to hell, wherever he may go. I will. Even, even my disciple may go to hell, wherever he may go. Huh? I, didn't, I didn't hear that. So wherever my disciple may go, I will be there. I will be there to deliver him. So he's telling 
some story. Okay, so when Brahman was saying, when I go to the Guluk Vrindavan, I will be there going with Krishna for grazing the cows. So he's telling about Gopu Kumar, he was telling to Mata Brahman, when I'm going with Krishna and his sakas to graze the cows, when we're about to start going. So Krishna called me that you should go. You should come and graze the cows with us. And just then Rataji came and stopped me. So what was Gop Kumar's name? saying something about how serving as Radhaji. Anyway. So Guru is not an ordinary thing. Guru. But we need this belief, this firm faith in Guru. Itai pada kamala koti chandra sushitala Dhrita Kori, it means tightly hold Lord's feet of Nityananda Akanda Guru Takva. Guru is not just an ordinary gross body, material body. Guru Tattva. So if we don't have Nishta, firm faith in Guru, then what, what type of bhajan will result? We must develop very thick, firm faith in our Guru. One devotee said, Bhagavan, you should take me to your abode. And Bhagavan said, what will you, what type of service will you do for me? What type of service have you done? Have you fed me, given me something to drink? Have you given some, some dakshina, some donation? So, what will you do? If you come, then what, what type of service? You won't do service, then what will you do? So, if we pray that, if I develop just a little bit of faith towards my Guru, so then when he started praying like this, then Krishna said, come with me right now. So the, the glories of service to the Guru have been exhibited. Okay, one shlok by Prahlad Maharaj. Guru Shushushaya Bhaktiya. Uh, there's no service greater than Guru service. Guru Seva. And how should Guru Seva be? It should be Nishkapat. It should be non duplicitous non duplicitous So it should be devoid of any cheating propensity. Only for the pleasure of Guru. Whether Bhagavan is pleased or not, this isn't necessary for us to consider. We should have one aim, that is that Gurudev should be pleased. Nothing else. That should be the aim of our lives. Therefore I have said this, that you are all greatly fortunate. Such a great Guru gave you his darshan, his mercy, his service.
uh, Ramachandra was making such a grand bridge with his the monkey army. And then when he saw one squirrel, chipmunk squirrel, um, it was fall falling in the water and it was like rolling in the sand. And then it was going on the, the rock bridge that was being constructed and it just shook the uh, sand off there. And then seeing that, Hanuman got upset. Hey, what are you, what are you doing? And the squirrel came to Ramachandra, to his, to his feet. What did Bhagavan Ramachandra do? This small little squirrel, he kept his uh, hand above it, and he kind of stroked it. He was petting it, yeah. And you see these uh, squirrels in India, they have these, yeah, they got these lines, these three lines. The chipmunk. So it came to the lotus feet and took shelter. And Radha Ramachandra, he kept his hand there and started patting it. And Hanuman said, we're taking such great stones. And what is this, what is this like squirrel chipmunk thing doing? He's just rubbing sand and tossing it on our bridge. He said, I'm putting the sand so that the sand is very smooth. So I'm just dropping some sand on this bridge so that nowhere you may step on like a sharp stone or any dip in the uh, bridge. It may be a very smooth path for you. So this is like, Bhagavan doesn't see whether it's a very small service or a great service. Don't become pry, proud that I've done such a great service. The Guru Padma, he is like Baba Garhi Janardhan. He is seeing our mood. Are you all understanding or not? It's not that we think that, oh, I'm such a big servic, servant. I've done such great service. This is ahankar. This is pride, thinking I have done it. One who does the greatest services, he will think that I haven't done anything. Who does very great services, he will think, oh, gosh, I haven't done anything. This instance of Hanuman and this, this squirrel or chipmunk, um, <laughs> Ramachandra, he began saying, look at the mood of this uh, chipmunk. It has so much affection toward me. So, we're doing that much service by which Bhagavan is transmitting that potency. So, as much potency as Bhagavan gives, we're doing that much service. Mahaprabhu transmitted the potency into the heart of Roy Ramananda and then from his lotus mouth, all of these tattvas he related to Mahaprabhu. How beautiful. How wonderful. I'm such a big servant of Guru. I did this service, I did that service, etc. Um, don't become uh, maddened by this, intoxicated by this uh, pride. So that thing which Guru Pat Padma is pleased with. And then when Gurudev told the Katha of Ramachandra, he told this instance of this uh, little chipmunk. Seva, seva is paramadharma. It is the topmost function. So time has gone. You are all so fortunate that Radharani's direct associate Rad, uh, Ramana Manjari, knowingly or unknowingly, you have had darshan, touch, service, 
hearing his katha and his other words, what more could one aspire for? Our, uh, he was saying we don't have eligibility. He's saying, Yoga Chavichari Kichunahi Pai. Guru Kripahi Kevalam. It is. Uh, Guru Kripahi Kevalam. We are, we are only for Guru's mercy. Guru's mercy, uh, sorry. Guru's mercy is everything. Ramani Manj- Ramana Manjari, one who can even uh, so, uh, like by her service, she is so so much pleasing Radharani. Even Radharani is like subjug- subjugated by her service, and all these other Manjaris, their mercy. So the such a guru, his touch, hearing from him. That's why I'm saying such Ashesh Nigda.